Hi everyone, my name is Mr. Robotic Warfare. I'm a member of the SciCraft server, and today I want to show you some of the new designs for logic gates that I've come up with. Uh, it's pretty standard in Minecraft these days to have uh, different kinds of logic gates, specifically towards building things like redstone computers or more complicated designs that require some logic. And traditionally, these things are built uh, with what we call a dust torch system. So the dust is the main purveyor of the signal, the torch provides the inversion, and then from there you can supplement with pistons or repeaters or stuff like that. And what I want to show off today is actually a completely alternate system of logic that relies on rails and observers. Uh, so before I get into too much of an explanation, if you're just interested in seeing the designs and you want to build them, I'll just do a quick fly through so you can pause the video for reference. Uh, so this is what an OR gate looks like. This is what an AND gate looks like. This is what a three input AND gate looks like. This is what an XOR gate looks like. This is what a NOT gate looks like. This is a, what I'm calling a SYNC gate. This is an observer input repeater. And this is a piston input repeater. All right, with that out of the way, I can actually explain a little bit about what's going on here. Uh, so first and foremost, one of the, the predecessors of this uh, is a guy named Pala Pala, who's also a member of the SciCraft server. Uh, if you've never heard of him or seen him before, he is really, really brilliant. He has a whole video where he goes through kind of his first pass through this kind of observer logic stuff. Unfortunately, Pala Pala is no longer an active member of the SciCraft server, uh, but I've kind of chosen to pick up the gauntlet and continue with it uh, because one of my specializations is redstone computing. Uh, Lots of stuff over there that I'll eventually get to. Um, but the idea here is that I want to try and eventually build a redstone computer using no dust. So basically just using observers and rails and pistons and a couple of other things on top of that. So the idea is that I'm, I'm incrementally building my way up towards being able to do that. And kind of one of the starting places that you need there is um, logic gates. So I'm going to be referencing the big video the, that Pala Pala put out a couple of years ago. I'm going to link that down in the description. I would highly recommend that you watch that because I really do consider this to kind of be an incremental build upon what he's worked on. So I'm going to be referencing it pretty frequently. Uh, so the first change that is kind of important based on what's, what Pala Pala has done is that now uh, these are all what I call synchronous gates. So I'm, I'm kind of calling the system synchronous observer logic. Uh, and the difference being there, right, you provide both of the inputs at the same time. So if we've got an AND gate right here, if you were to look at what Pala built previously, an AND gate is pretty easy if you can, you know, toggle one input and then toggle the other input um, because then you can do that in sequence and you can have kind of like a piston by stable thing that does that. Uh, as opposed to something like this, what we're doing is for actually all of these gates, we assume that both, both of the inputs or all three of the inputs in the case of the three input AND gate are delivered to the device at the same time. So this is kind of a synchronous thing. Uh, one of the big reasons for this is simply because um, it makes it slightly faster if you look at kind of the broad scheme of things. Uh, so if you think about how we divide things up, uh, Time-wise, we talk about either redstone ticks or game ticks. If you're not familiar with game ticks, uh, one redstone tick is simply two game ticks. Uh, so the idea is that you know if you talk about just putting a redstone repeater down, we would say that that's a one tick delay, uh, when in fact it's also a two game tick delay. And it's a lot easier to work in game ticks when you're doing some of this more complicated stuff, uh, especially with the way that this AND gate works. So. The reason why I make this distinction here is because when you're talking about doing things sequentially, right? If you have to, if the if the gate is only going to work if you do one input and then the other, what's the fastest that you can actually input those two things? Well, you need two game ticks for the observer for one, and two game, game ticks for the observer for the other one. Right? One being input here, which means that you have to spend four game ticks simply inputting uh, the signals to the device, where if you do it synchronously, you can do both of those things at the same time. And the idea is that one of the things that I've built over here is what I call a sync gate. And the idea is that if your signals are appearing, uh, not at the same time here, so I'll just demonstrate this real fast. If your signals are not appearing at the same time, you can give them an input and this device, what it's going to do here is that it can take that input and it's going to store it here. Basically, this is storing it. And then when you're ready, you can send the sync signal. 
that's going to give you your output. And then it's also going to immediately reset itself. Uh, so the idea is that then you can continue providing inputs and it'll do that. And if you don't provide an input and send the sync signal, there's no signal that's going to pass. Uh, so this is one of the devices that I've built that can kind of help supplant uh, the system that's been developed here. Um, but the idea is that when we provide these things synchronously, it actually makes them a little bit more time efficient. The other reason why this is really important is because when you're not using a redstone torch or persistent signals, right? There, it's really no good way to invert a signal, right? So if you have redstone, redstone is like continuously on or continuously off. Obviously, you can put pulses down it. Uh, but when you think about kind of the traditional redstone logic gate thing, especially if you think of just your traditional redstone AND gate, you've got, you know, two inputs, two torches, a redstone dust, and another torch. And that kind of relies on everything being on at the same time. Everything with observers and rails works on pulses, right? Observers just provide a pulse. They don't provide a continuous signal. So if you need to negate something, what we're looking at right here is a not gate, you still need some kind of synchronization signal because there's no actual way for you to provide that otherwise, right? If you don't have an input, then no input can drive any of the output. Now, the lucky thing here is that kind of these three basic types of gates, OR and an XOR, um, when both of the inputs are zero, the output is zero for all of them, which is which means that it's not an issue. So if we actually want to get an inverted set here, all we have to do is stick a NOT gate at the end, which is actually kind of how the schematic symbols are drawn. And what you'll find here is that if I just, you know, hook up a quick output just to show you what's going on here. If this is my sync input, right, I wait for my input at some point, And then I have my input here, right? So what I'm saying here is that now I'm inverting this because there's there, there I haven't delivered a signal in. So there's essentially a zero at the input. And when I send my sync signal, I'm getting the one at the output. And if I were to switch that around here, then doesn't matter how many times I send that sync signal, now I'm getting a one inverted into a zero. So it's kind of tricky to think about. Um, but right now, kind of like I said, what I'm doing is just taking through, taking you through kind of all of the logical changes that have to happen uh, when you're building a system like this. So one of the other things that's kind of a result of this is that you need to have a pulse on and a pulse off. So when you have continuous signals, you can turn the signal on and then turn the signal off and that can represent providing an input. Now, because we don't have continuous signals, what we actually have to do is we need to shift to essentially doing double pulses. So instead of on and then off, we do a pulse and then a pulse. Uh, and this is just kind of a quick device that will repeat that signal, right? So if we just look at this right here and I just give it an input quickly, you're gonna see it's gonna pulse twice. And there's going to be essentially uh, a two game tick pulse, then uh, two game ticks where there's no pulse, and then the two to game tick pulse, which is the closest that you can put those things together while there's still being a gap in the middle. Uh, so the idea is that this now provides a way for us to uh, kind of repeat the input twice, uh, which basically resets all of these devices. All right, so that's kind of the theory behind all of this stuff works. Now let's talk about the actual logic gates here because some of this stuff is actually pretty cool. So for your OR gate, uh, nothing shocking at all. It's uh, kind of an easy thing to see, right? The idea is that uh, if you have an input on either one of these, uh, this is going to power this block, which powers the rail. This is going to power this block, which powers the rail. And if you power either of them, you power the output. And that's kind of the quintessential OR gate. So you can see um, power one, it works. Power the other, it works. And then uh, if we power both of them at the same time, still works. So that is your OR gate, nice and simple, not rock and science. Now, the AND gate is actually significantly more interesting and actually kind of complicated, believe it or not. So what you're actually seeing here would not work as an AND gate if it was not sequential. This is actually kind of an implication logic function. So the idea is that the single input right here is just pulsing this observer here, and it needs the bottom input to actually be provided for that signal to actually propagate through. Now, because we have the guarantee that these things are happening synchronously, that the inputs are coming synchronously, we can take something like this and use it as an AND gate. Now, it's not immediately clear why you can do that, so let me explain. What's actually happening here is that at the output here, we need this observer to stabilize it because usually when you talk about an observer pulse, you're talking about two game ticks. In this instance, our output is actually a one game tick pulse or half a redstone tick. And I can show you that a little bit more clearly if I switch this out for a rail. 
Um, oops. Nope, come on. There you go. So if we just look at uh, the way that this works here, right? If we do one, doesn't work. If we do one, doesn't work. But if we do both of them at the same time, then it does work in both directions. Now, let's slow the tick rate down here all the way to one, and I'll show you what's happening here. So if we just do a normal input here, you can see one, two, three, four, and that's kind of, you're, you're seeing uh, basically what I was counting there was the game ticks. So you can see that we're doing essentially one game tick per second, so this thing is on for two seconds, which indicates one pulse. Now, if I do both of these things at the same time, we're gonna watch the top rail and then the bottom rail. So there's our one, two, and then you can see here, it's just gonna turn on for one second. So what's actually happening is that this observer is pulsing for two game ticks, right? But the piston itself takes one game tick to extend and then one game tick to retract, right? We're essentially one tick pulsing the piston, which is why it's dropping its block. So the idea is that while this is on, in the very first game tick, the block is not here because the piston is extending. But in the second game tick, this is basically turning off, but the block is here now, so the rail is picking up the very tail end of that two game tick pulse. And when we go in the reverse direction, the opposite is happening. So for the first game tick of the pulse here, it's there, and then the block is retracted. So for the second game tick, it turns off again. And if we put, if we simply put another observer at the output, we can actually detect that one game tick pulse, and it just comes. Uh, we can turn it back into essentially a two game tick pulse. So that's how the AND gate works. Um, so basically, you're you're moving a block out of the way or putting a block in the path of the signal so that the signal can actually propagate. And then the three input AND gate is basically the same thing, except now we're also moving a rail. Um, so I would have to build a little something to, to provide all the inputs at the same time, but you can just kind of see that it works on the same principle. The block is being moved over and the rail is being moved over at the same time. And then we have this the top input that's still going to trigger this and then the, uh, the output can be observed right here. Uh, note that this piston here is being powered by quasi-connectivity, or QC. If you don't know what QC is, I think Il Mango's got a couple of really good videos on it, uh, which is going to be a really important concept for when we talk about the XOR gate, because that's fairly complicated. Um, so if you don't know what quasi-connectivity or QC is, I would highly recommend um, going to watch something on that topic. So that's our OR gate and our AND gate and our three input AND gate. Now let's talk about uh, the, uh, the piece de resistance here, the XOR gate. So if you know anything about Minecraft logic gates, you'll know that XOR gates are usually pretty complicated. Uh, they're just kind of tedious to build, and um, usually they're not particularly space efficient. Uh, and I guess this is a good time to mention that if it wasn't already clear, all of this stuff is one wide tileable. Uh, so you can you know stack this stuff together as much as you want, and nothing is going to interfere. So let's just quickly go over the, the truth table for an XOR gate, right? So if neither of the inputs are given, then the output is a zero. If one of the inputs are given, it's a one, but if both of the inputs are given, it's a zero. So it's kind of like an OR gate, except it, will, it won't work if both of them are on. And that's why we call it exclusive OR. So let's just try and follow one of the signal paths here. So let's just go into the A input here. So if we give it the A input, it's gonna go through this observer, follow the rail. First, what it's gonna do is it's gonna continue propagating the signal into this observer. It's gonna feed it through this block right here to this rail and then to the output. So if we were to just set this up real fast, you can see that if I give it this input, it's gonna give you my output. Same thing with the bottom input, where it's just gonna go a little bit of a different direction this way. Uh, it's gonna go through this observer. This observer is gonna detect it through there. The trapdoor is gonna give us our right angle here. This observer is gonna detect it, go through this block, and then once again to the output. So the same thing here. Now, the cool thing is that while each of these inputs are doing, they're kind of cross-connected. So the idea is that when this happens, let's just start with the B input here. While this splits off, one of the other things that it does is it lights up this rail with this observer detects, and then it pushes this piston out of the way. So now if we were to activate the A input, it can't actually propagate through there because the block has been moved out of the way. So it will no longer work. Now the same thing is actually happening on the top here. It's just a little bit tricky to see. So this downwards facing observer is detecting the signal from the A input, and then it's powering this piston down here by quasi-connectivity. Uh, so you can see that we're kind of just jumping a gap here, but that piston is still being triggered. So what happens if we put both of them at the same time? Well, both of the pistons move out of the way, 
and neither of the signals ever make it to this because they're basically removing each other's signal path. And in doing so, you can see that our output right there isn't moving. So one input is fine. There's our output. The other input is fine. But when we do bo both together, it doesn't work. So kind of the, uh, an interesting implementation of the XOR gate here. Yes, thank you for that. So now we've got OR and XOR. We got our three input AND if you need it. And then you combine that with our um, NOT gate here. And you can achieve any logic function that you need with those devices. So you can take any three of these, stick this on the end. That gets you NOR, NAND, and XNOR. Um, technically, that would also be a three input NAND gate. So different ways to do it. And then you can use this device here. If you have asynchronous inputs, you can use this device to synchronize them. And then if you're just moving with a kind of a single pulse system, you can use these to actually repeat uh, the inputs twice. And you can string these together in all different kinds of ways. And you can see that I've, I've started doing some more complicated stuff with this. Uh, but like I said, my idea is to eventually work towards building uh, a fully dustless, or I guess we'll say a rail-based Minecraft computer. Uh, because that's kind of what I'm into, and it seems like a very interesting option to me. So here's this. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any other ideas or uses for this. Uh, hopefully uh, it will serve you well. I really want to see uh, what people can come up with with this system, because you know the more that we grow it, we might be able to get some things faster or improved, etc. Uh, but yeah, that's all I've got for you today. So thank you so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you later. Thanks.